Hallo, guten Tag, mein Name ist Friedemann Karik und ich begrüße Sie alle ganz herzlich bei den Me Future Talks von Mercedes-Benz. Hier auf dieser Biene, Bühne bietet Mercedes Ihnen das Gespräch an zur Zukunft der Mobilität. Wie Sie sehen, werden hier Themen zur Elektromobilität verhandelt, zum autonomen Fahren, dem Carsharing und natürlich der Vernetzung. Also man kann sagen, nichts Geringeres als die Megatrends der Automobilbranche. Eine große Rolle spielen aber auch neue digitale Dienstleistungen und sie bekommen Einblicke in neue Arbeits- und Produktionsprozesse bei Mercedes-Benz. Stichwörter sind hier vor allem Startups und die Smart Factory. Da Sie wahrscheinlich nur heute hier auf der IAA sind, können Sie natürlich nicht jeden dieser Talks live hier auf der Bühne mitverfolgen, aber Sie haben natürlich die Möglichkeit, auf dem IAA Special, auf der Mercedes-Benz Webseite, alle Talks, die hier gelaufen sind und die noch laufen werden, noch einmal anzuschauen. Ja, und einige dieser Talks, so wie dieser hier, werden auch live auf Facebook gestreamt über die Mercedes-Benz-Seite. Deswegen begrüße ich jetzt auch alle, die auf Facebook eingeschaltet haben. Herzlich willkommen zu Hause. Jetzt wollen wir uns dem Motorsport widmen. In wenigen Bereichen der Automobilindustrie steckt so viel technologische Innovation, so viel Entwicklung, so viel Design Thinking wie in der Formel 1. Seit 2014 zum Beispiel fährt die Formel 1 konsequent hybrid. Und bei diesem Projekt war die digitale Entwicklung ein zentraler Baustein des Erfolgs. Deshalb haben wir jetzt jemanden zu Gast, der über 27 Jahre Motorsporterfahrung verfügt. Heute trägt er den schönen Titel Digital Engineering Transformation Director bei der Mercedes-AMG Petronas Motorsport. Also unser perfekter Gesprächspartner für dieses Thema. Meine Damen und Herren, hier ist für Sie Geoff Willis. Jeff, great Hello. to have you here. Good Glad night. that you made it. Come with me. Um, we see some pictures from your daily work. Does it look like that? So beautiful. Yes, this is, is this it is re realistic. This is our day day to day environment. looks a little bit like science fiction to me. It's the good mixture of, uh, of people and technology. <laughs> yeah. 
So you have been in Formula One since 1990, I understand. So for nearly 30 years. And in that time, our life, our world has been transformed in terms of digitalization, for example. So how has your work transformed? How has Formula One changed? I've been very fortunate to see the growth of, uh, of digital technology uh, over those decades, both uh, from design, from understanding, from uh, control, how we run our business, and of course from data, uh, how we understand what's going on. And there's been an evolution. Early, computational tools, digital tools were there for analysis, and now they're really becoming part of design. So we've gone from analysis to understanding to insight to, to knowledge, uh, and it's those tools. And every part of our business now depends on that. You know, we manage racing cars with 10, 20,000 components. Now we know all about them, we know how they work, we track them. Uh, the whole business is completely dependent on, on digital tools. Since 2014, the new hybrid era of Formula One, Mercedes-Benz has, one can say, dominated Formula One. Can you share your secrets with us? How did you do that? We've been very fortunate in this time. I think it comes from several points. One was we started very early. So the power unit group were working from 2010 onwards, and the chassis group were working from 2011. But the key points were to really understand what the problem, what the challenge was with a hybrid technology. What were we trying? And the key point was efficiency. These, the hybrid technology, we're developing in the power unit 20% more power with 50% less fuel. But the whole package had to be developed. And it was understanding that it wasn't a collection of separate components, but it was understanding the whole picture, really setting those objectives and getting all the people to work together. And a little bit of British understanding from your side, I see. We've been very fortunate in, in how much we've been supported by, by Daimler, in, both, in, both financially but in, in technology. But I think the really key part has been understanding the problem. And that, that's a, that's a new, new approach. Yeah. Many people see Formula One just like something as a, as a marketing platform, but you do work together with the Daimler Group on many areas, aren't you? If you'd asked me this question 20 years ago, then I would say, honestly, there wasn't much apart from the marketing connection between automotive and Formula One. But over particularly the last five or six years, we've seen very much the pressures on both industries are converging the tool sets. So the problems of testing, the, the speed of needing new models, the speed of us developing our racing cars, the types of technology we're trying to, to deal with has meant that the, although the problems are different, the solution, the tools are very similar. And we find now we have conversations with Daimler engineers and we are talking about the same tool set. We have different problems and this alignment is really powerful because we can develop comp digital tools to analyze our and design our really complicated Formula One suspension. It's not relevant to road car suspension, but the tool is. And the way you design the road car suspension, and the same for reliability, very much a, 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 a drawing together and a very positive effect. The Mercedes AMG Hypercar is one example for technology trickling down into our everyday road car life. What else are we going to see in the future? What do you think? Well, we're certainly with the hybrid technology, we have in the racing car the most efficient uh, internal combustion engine ever. We're over 50% thermal efficiency. But also we have uh, very uh, efficient, very small, few kilos weighing electric motors generating 150 horsepower. So the, 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 the motor technology, the battery technology. You know, Formula One is an environment not for leading edge technology, but for implementing that technology. And we're very good at showing how to take something from the bench, take it into the field, make it work, make it reliable, and, and make all those steps happen very quickly. And I think we will see that sort of technology coming into, into mainstream automotive and the applications of all the tools that we've been developing at the same time. 
As I understand, the automotive sector in general is becoming more and more like Formula One in, in terms of pace of innovation, for example. What um, can the automotive sector learn from the Formula One to keep that pace? Certainly, we're, we've been under time pressure for many years, and we've learned how to make sure we, we manage the projects. We have, if I take a phrase from the, um, the information technology from the computer world, we're very much an agile business. So we break our problems down, we solve each little step at a time, we actually have a material development, we use our digital tools to, to minimize our risk, to ensure that our concepts are going to work. We use a lot of simulation, we use, you've seen driving simulators in the, in the video, you'll see the Lewis Hamilton in the driving simulator. This allows us to have a concept, test it in the virtual world, understand what it needs to have, and then turn that into hardware. So taking all that guesswork out, taking out the tens of thousands of kilometers of testing, that's the real key to, to speeding up the, the, the rate of development. You uh, already mentioned data. Big data is very important for you in your daily work in this uh, de development. And w with mobility becoming even more electrified, data is becoming more and more important. So. What is, your, what is your daily approach to data? How do you handle that big amount of information? Well, our, our world of data has changed enormously. When I was first in Formula One back in 1990, we were really pleased. We had 10 channels of data off the racing car. For the first time, we really understood what the driver's doing. Now we're collecting 150 gigabytes of data per car per weekend. And when we add all the rest of the data that we collect, we're into the petabyte data world. And so we're having to change. We're having to exploit these new technologies, what I call data science, data analytics, machine learning. We're not quite there yet with artificial intelligence, but it won't be many years before we don't use humans to look at the data. We will be looking machines to look at the data. So managing that data. And I often think of it's a, it's a hybrid. There's data, there's information, which is data that you've understood where it comes from, you, you've categorized it. And then on top of information, there's knowledge. And it's that transformation from information to knowledge that's the key. And that enables you to, as an organization to keep building on that data. And that's, that's the future of, of data for me. It's the growth of knowledge. But you would still consider yourself or call yourself an engineer, not a, not a data scientist or a computer scientist? Or... We are engineers, and I, I say that an engineer is uh, many definitions of an engineer, but the usual definition is an engineer can do what anybody else can do, but he can do it faster and for less money. <laughs> <laughs> so we are very good at finding all the tools and finding quick ways to use those tools. So we're not specialist scientists. We don't worry too much about the detail. What we want is, the, is to use that tool to get ourselves an answer. And we are being pushed on every two weeks. Sometimes every week we have a race. Sometimes we have to respond from one weekend to another. And similarly, in the automotive, the pressure to change. You know, how many models per year now? How many changes and the updates per year? It's, it, it's relentless, that pressure. So, thanks a lot for the first part of our little talk. Now, would, pleasure. Be, would be the, uh, the opportunity to have a little Q&A. If somebody has a question for this expert on motorsport, he will be around a little bit more, and we see each other again at 2.30 yep. for even more insights on this topic. Just let me switch to German for the goodbye. Vielen Dank schon mal bis hierhin fürs Zuhören an Sie. Um 12 Uhr, Sandra Ries, die Kollegin auf der großen Bühne unten mit Intuitive Mobility. Und um 12.30 Uhr sehen Sie hier dann den Car Talk mit dem Kollegen Julian Hiller zum EQA. Auch super spannend. Und hier geht es weiter, wie gesagt, 14.30 Uhr mit Jeff Willis, Part 2. Thanks a lot. Vielen Schönen Dank. Tag auf der IA.